Uh, the thing we're going to look at today, uh, I know a few people had asked about it uh, before, was modal verbs. So I thought we'd do a big review. So we're basically going to throw all the modal verbs into one and give you guys a nice kind of well-rounded look at uh, everything that we might use. So I hope this is going to be useful for you guys. Uh, we're only going to look at the present and the future today. We're not going to look at the past because it's, it's just too much, too much to do in one day. But I think we can challenge you guys to look at a lot of uh, modal verbs today. So this is kind of the thing we're going to be working on. So if you guys got any questions throughout the stream, uh, please ask. Uh, I have put a copy in the stream for you. So I'll, I'll put another one in there just in case you didn't get it before. But I think everyone should have it. So here it, it is in the stream. Let's put it in there one more time right at the top. So if you guys are just joining us, uh, the way we do it here is grab a copy of the document that I'm about to put in there. And you guys can modify that document. You can use it. Uh, this is exactly what we're going to be doing today. So the document is in there. Please pick it up, check it out. All right. So here we go. Uh, what we're going to get into today is modal verbs and looking at a lot of different ways to use them. So without further ado, boom. Oh, wait, where'd I go? There I am. All right. So here we go. This is what we're going to be looking at, guys. And you got a little, a small job to do today. So we're going to talk about these as usual. We're going to make a few sentences together. Uh, you, and I want you guys to you know, always give me some answers. Give me a, an extended answer. Um, OK, so give me an extended answer uh, of anything that we talk about here. Always answer why when we do this kind of stuff. And you do have two jobs today. Today, you don't, you don't need to worry about the other student in this. Uh, there are no, you guys are all together. But so what I want you to do is I want you to uh, read this sentence. We're, we're going to do number one first. Put it up there above my head. We're going to do number one first, and I want you guys to read this sentence. And when you do it, uh, I also want you to tell me about the time. And you got two options here. So if you look at the top here, it says you're not going to be walking around this class. I guess you could walk around if you want to, but it might be a little weird. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to read the sentence, and I want you to tell me while you're doing this, are these ideas present, as you can see here, and present simple? Like, for example, um, you know, I'm going to go or I will go. Uh, or, sorry, what am I doing here? Let me, let's, let's back that up. This is Monday. Give me a second. Tuesday will be better. Present simple. Okay, so I go, I walk, I talk, all that stuff. Or is it going to be future? I am going to go. Uh, I will walk. Or can it be both? So sometimes you have an option. So I want you guys to do that. Read the sentence. We're going to start with one. And you, I want you to tell me some more information about it. And I also want you to tell me the time. Just up here, I want you to tell me what is the time. Is it a present time or is it a future time? Because that's what we're going to be looking at these two things with modal verbs today. All right, so the first sentence is number one. Let's start with that. Uh, so for you, some of you guys, you can do this. Uh, I don't think I can do this anymore, but I can party until the early hours of the morning. Okay, so uh, if you agree, please tell me, can you do that? Okay, so um, I'll be honest, I cannot. I'm going to change my answer. Uh, well, actually, that's not totally true. You can't party till the early hours of the morning anymore. Have become too old. Okay, which is kind of true. I might be lying a little bit. I could probably do it, but I just don't do it that often anymore. OK, so what about you guys? I want you guys to answer this. I'll throw this one in the chat just so you know what we're doing as well. Uh, agree or disagree with this idea? And then tell me why. So there's your sentence. I can party until the early hours of the morning. Do you guys agree with that or not? What do you think about that? And while I'm waiting for you guys to give a few answers there, we can also go and look at the second one as well. OK, this one is a good one. I think most students are like this. OK, so also when you're, when you're writing, you can start looking at the second one. But here we go. First one's coming in. So I can't party until, and sorry, I should write that the proper way, until. You can say till or you can say until. So I can't party until the early hours anymore because I have become too old. Yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, and so one person said that this idea is present. Good. And I think, I think that's correct, isn't it? Because when you say, I can party until the early hours, you're talking about something which happens all the time, kind of a repeated action, right? Uh, we always use the present simple grammar for repeated actions. So no ing here, just simple, right? So whenever you hear me say simple, 
it means no ing verb. It's just I can party, I can go, I can walk. Okay, yeah, you guys are all right, you got it. So again, some people agree with this idea. Uh, so let's look at the next one here. And a lot of students, I, I have to say, they probably can't. At least all the students, most of the students in my class, they, they live for their cell phones, they're little babies. So can you live without your cell phone? And if you can live without your cell phone, please, please tell us why. And again, is that a present idea or a future idea? Because we're going to be looking at the time, and it's going to be present, simple, future, or both. Okay. So what do you guys think about that? Do you agree with that idea? I can't live without my cell phone. Uh, so I can live without my cell phone. For a while, but it's kind of important. Okay, and I got some people saying present yet, yeah, and I agree, present simple again, right? Because we have this idea, I can't live without my cell phone every day. So you can kind of imagine in that sentence over there, right there, that you're saying every day, I can't live without my cell phone every day or all the time, which is a present simple idea. All right, so let's see a few. Uh, this one here. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. So uh, one person says here, we'll just throw their answer up. Good little answer. So this person says, uh, cannot pronounce his name, so sorry about that. I can live without my cell phone when I have a separate camera. Sure, right? Because you need your camera most of the time when you guys are going out. So it definitely has an advantage there. Uh, <laughs> and this person says here, uh, there we go. And then Barna has an answer here. She says, uh, I can't live without my cell phone because I'm using daily basis. Okay, very nice, Barna. Good. I'm just going to change one little thing here. I'm using, we're going to use it on a daily basis. So we just want to add that little bit there because in English, usually after a verb, we have something, even if it's repeated. So we say it on a daily basis. All right, and Paolo says, uh, I can live without my cell phone. I'm doing that already. Congratulations, Paolo. You're probably the first one who's been able to do it. Good job. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Uh, take a look at number three, guys. Let's try with that one. And this one depend, might depend on where you come from. So uh, number three says, someone in my family can speak three languages. And do you, do you guys agree with that idea? Or maybe just one language is not so bad. So let's see what uh, Pilar says. Pilar has an answer. Oh, where did you gotta get in there? Oh, that's not working. So, so done in my head. All right, Pilar, I'm not sure what you got. You said so done, and I'm not sure, but you said Spanish and something else. I'm not too sure what the answers were, but probably three languages, right? All right, and a lot of people are coming up. They're saying someone in my family can speak three languages. And again, that's every day. That's an everyday idea, so that's a present simple idea. All right, and a lot of people agree, so good for you if you can speak three languages. I'm struggling with my first language, so I'm working on it. All right. Now, if you look at these ones, let me let me break this down a little bit. So, look at these ones here. We're gonna, and I want you to think about these things as we do. And usually, I underline. I put a little underline on some of these sentences because there's a different idea in each of them, and we're focusing on the modal verbs. Okay, so can and can't, and now we're using can in a different way. So, I'll, I'll save that for later. But just keep when you're doing these things, look at the underlined words and think about what the differences are because we we're gonna run into a lot of differences as we as we go later in this lesson. All right, let's jump into the next one. Let's take a look at number four, please. And this one you'll see it's a little bit different than can, right? So now we're using could. So what's the difference between can and could? So number four, uh, I could go skydiving this weekend if someone else wanted to go. Now, do you guys agree with that? Would you go skydiving? Could you go skydiving? Uh, I've gone four times. It was amazing each time. I totally recommend it. Uh, but uh, it's some, not for everybody, right? Some people said, oh, I've done it, and I will never do it again. Well. You know, to each their own. Some people love it, some people don't. All right, now look at this idea here. We'll, we'll break that down a little bit. I could go skydiving this weekend. Good, so you guys are on, you guys are doing a good job already. You got the time, the time is future. And I didn't, I, I guess the only way you know it's future is because I said this weekend. So it's, it's really this word which is giving you the clue, right, that it's about the future. Okay, so I could go skydiving this weekend. So think about that when you're looking at the other sentence. Is there a word in there which helps you to understand, oh yeah, it's probably the future or it's the present. All right, and yes, it is a, it is a conditional as well, right on, nice one. 
Uh, so it would be in the future, right? So let's go, uh, let's do number five because I think a lot of people might be in this situation right now. Maybe you're waking up to learn some English and congratulations, good on you for doing it. Uh, I should be at home snoozing right now. And if you don't know snoozing, snoozing is that button that you hit every morning for five minutes or 10 minutes and hit it again and hit it again until it's finally time you say, okay, I guess I should wake up already. Uh, so the snooze button, snooze is another word for sleep. Okay, so I should be at home snoozing right now. And uh, do, 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 do. So that means just, I mean, I should be at home sleeping right now. So yeah, some of you guys might agree with that. And then you can see we use should be in this situation. So it's a little bit different. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, someone was asking uh, which one is the verb. And I think you're asking about number five. So I should be snoozing right now. Snoozing is the verb. So we're using it as an ing verb. Uh, so we will look a little bit at that as well, but mostly we're going to focus on uh, a lot of simple. So um, this one should probably change. I'm going to change that one a little bit. Uh, I should be at home asleep. And if I say asleep, then that one, that one might work a little bit better for that. Okay. So let's go. Let's do one more. And then we're going to get into a little bit of the grammar challenge and why. The next one I have here. Uh, this one is, so I usually do this stuff for my class, but you can see this one still might be useful for you. I ought to go to the Rocky Mountains before I return home to my country. Um, okay, well, maybe let's just change that one before I die, because maybe you will come to Canada and maybe you'll check out the Rocky Mountains, which are awesome. So think about ought to. What does ought to mean in that situation? And we're going to get to that as well. Uh, number seven. Okay, and again, ought to. Uh, I ought to go to the Rocky Mountains before I die. What does that sound like? Does it sound like a future idea or does it sound like a present simple idea? It kind of sounds like a, like a future idea, doesn't, doesn't it? Um, okay, so let's go on here. Number seven. All right, so here's another one. So I had better hit the beach for some sun before it's gone. Unfortunately, in Vancouver, the sun is kind of disappearing already, and it's not really beach weather already. So if you have beach weather, good for you. Uh, we've kind of lost ours. Uh, so, but what does it mean? Uh, well, we've got a few things in here. we got hit the beach. And if, you, if you've been in the other classes, you might know that hit the beach means go to the beach. OK, so that's another way you can use it. And had better, what do you think had better is? Is it a past, present, or future? Or sorry, is it a present or a future idea? I'd better hit the beach for some sun before it's gone. Again, kind of not, not really clear. Do you guys think it's future? Yeah, I see a few people saying it's future as well. This one's kind of tricky, right? Uh, you had better hit the beach a few times. That might sound like present simple. So sometimes it's not super clear whether it's, uh, whether it's a present simple or a future idea. So again, hit, hit the beach, hit the books. Yeah, I see you guys are talking about that. It means do it, right? Hit the books means study. Hit the beach means go to the beach. Hit the gym means go exercise at the gym. So start using those words. Use them in your own. Uh, use them when you're in your English. Uh, start using them because they're really super common. We use them all the time. All right. Uh, number nine. I guess we'll have to skip number nine because you guys might be on your phones and you're definitely not being lazy. You're involved in the class. But uh, in my class, it usually means the students are lazy. They think, oh, I can hide from the teacher, ha, ha, ha. But you know, whenever they're like scrolling and smiling, you know they're not looking at their dictionary because they're smiling way too much. So look at this idea. Is that a present or a future idea? Any student who is on their phone uh, must be lazy. Yeah, I know I forgot number eight, but I'm kind of jumping ahead because I want to get I want to get into the challenging part of this a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a few of these as we do it. So any student who is on their phone must be lazy. Does that sound like a future idea or a present idea? I got people saying yes and no. Some people say present. Some people say future. To me, I agree. I think it sounds like a present idea because we're thinking about on their phone. And how many times are you on your phone? Kind of every day, right? You guys got it. OK, it could be future. Uh, but you would have to add some information. Any student who is on their phone tomorrow during the class must be lazy. I would need some, some more words to make it future. OK, so you guys got it pretty much so far. Let's uh, do a couple more, and then I want to jump into the, the grammar challenge part. So let's do, oops, what happened there? All right, let's do, uh, let's do number 11, because that one's kind of trickier. All right, so my parents. So maybe you guys are traveling, or maybe you're home, or maybe you're just living away from home. 
so my parents don't have to keep in touch with me every day. And I think that one gives you kind of the answer, right? Because I use that time word at the end of the sentence. Present, you're right. Uh, Madilla, you got it. So my parents don't have to keep in touch with me every day. What does it mean, keep in touch? And I think most of you guys know this already. And yes, you're right, it is present. My parents don't have to keep in touch with me every day. It means talk to me, contact me, uh, call me, whatever, or text me every day. Keep in touch means keep contact, keep in communication. And I think you're right. Uh, my parents don't have to keep in touch with me every day. It means it's a, it's a present idea because I use that word every day. So that's kind of a giveaway, right? All right. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, let's do yeah. Let's do this one more, and then I think we can jump into the grammar challenge because you guys have seen these before. So this is a little bit of review as well. So let's check out this last one. All right. So using might. So this grammar might be difficult for me. Yeah, it might might not depending on how long you guys have been studying. How about this idea? Is it an everyday idea or is it a future idea? Because again, it says this grammar might be difficult for me. Now, if I'm talking about the future, what did I say to give you the idea of the future? Or maybe I didn't say anything. So what do you guys think it might be? Could it be both? Mm. I would say, I think it makes, I see a lot of people saying future. Uh, if you're saying, I agree with the present. Uh, because if you say this grammar might be difficult for me, you are studying it right now. So it kind of gives you an idea that it's going to be uh, present idea because we're studying at the moment but if you look at number 13 use may may be late for tomorrow's class so again you can see that some sometimes when we use these modal verbs may might must sometimes it's not always super clear is it a present idea or future so sometimes we have to put more information like for example tomorrow and if I put tomorrow then it's definitely clear that the idea could be a uh, future okay so keep that in mind when you guys are looking at this. So let's let's go down to the grammar challenge here. We're going to jump into a few of these here. And I want you guys to, to answer these with me. I'm going to stay in the chat this time. Uh, and I want to, I think once you guys, if you can understand a lot of these little things, you know, how to make modal verbs, what is the difference between two, you'll have a better understanding when you use them in the future. Because I'm going to show you a lot of different kinds of modal verbs today. I think we've used quite a few. Uh, so let's take a look and let's start with these questions about modal verbs. So let's start with the first question here. So, and you can see that I've, I've kind of given you some hints as well. Present or future simple. So we're, we were kind of talking about present or future ideas today. How do we make modal verbs with the present or future simple? So of course we're going to need our subject. And then after that, what are we going to need? Uh, we're going to need, sorry, I'm going to change my copy here. I realize I'm using your copy. Let's go here to my copy. All right, so if, if I'm using this here, so I'd like, you know, you guys can write your answers in here as well. What is the first thing we're going to use here? Of course, we're going to use our modal verb. That's the first thing we're going to use. So you're going to use might or may or must or any of those. Good. Uh, Mayran's got it already. Yeah, you got it. So modal verb uh, plus your What's the other verb? Plus your verb. What's, what, do we ca what can we call that verb? We can call it an infinitive verb. OK, so how would that look? It would basically look like, let me get out of there, stop that. OK, so OK, well, let me just explain it. Subject, modal verb, infinitive verb. I might go, I may go, I must go, I have to go, I should go. So you can see, and, uh, and not only go, you can use be or have or anything like that. So that's exactly it. So after our modal verb, might, may, should, whatever, we're just going to use a regular verb, no ing. Okay. So that's one thing that I want you just to remember for today, especially for today, we're not going to use any ing verbs. We're just going to use present simple ideas or future simples. So number two, this one here, which two types of verbs do we use after modal verbs? And and. I'm not saying there's only two types, but there's kind of two big categories which you might separate them. Uh, so for example, I might be hungry uh, or I might go home. Well, there's kind of a bit of a difference between those two verbs we got here. Uh, so I think the two, I'll just give you those answers because we have the be verb and then we have other verbs. Okay, So go, run, walk would be your other verbs. And then over here we would also have the be verb. Because the be verb is kind of special, right? It, it, it has its own functions, and you use it with different kinds of grammar. So I'm just going to separate them into two big categories, just because they're, they're a little tricky. And it's just easier to separate them sometimes. 
All right. And yes, uh, Dia, you got it. Yeah, action verbs, status verbs. That's, that's basically what I'm saying. I just say other verbs because sometimes students might, they might not know that right away, action verbs and state verbs. But you're right. It's just other verbs. Um, or it is those two, OK? Um, so <laughs> uh, let, me, let me see if I can do some of that. I can try to do a little bit of that. Um, so uh, next one. Uh, da, 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 da. Which time? So, and I, we kind of talked about this one already. So, take a look at that one. Which times are all these modal verbs used for? Uh, so, what were the two times that we talked about today? Uh, I know you guys were talking. I, I gave you two options the whole day. So, what were the two times that we were using? Now, there are other options. Of course, we can use modal verbs in the past, but for today, we're just going to focus on two times. What were those two times? Uh, the first time was a present simple. Yeah, there you go. Present future. And yeah, you got it. All right, so the present simple. Oops, come on, learn how to. Oh, come on. Let's go here. Right. So present simple and future simple are the two that we were going to focus on today. OK, so there you go. That's, that's an important rule as well. So modal verbs, depending on the information, you know, tomorrow or no tomorrow, they can be present simple ideas or they can be future. So you don't have to change much else. Uh, you can use them in those two ways. Now let's get into the tricky stuff. So let's take a look at these two. I'm going to try to keep these highlighted so I don't move around too much. Uh, what are the two meanings of can? And you, you probably you've seen this before, but there, are, there we go. Paolo's on it. Wait, that a boy, Paolo. Ability and permission is correct. Okay, so which one is the ability? I can play the drums and I can come to the party. Well, the first one is definitely the ability, right? I can play the drums, which is great. So ability, what can you do? Your capability, like a skill, right? I can play the piano, I can, you know, I can, I can whistle, I can, you know, whatever. All right, and the other one is possibility. Okay, so of course you can come to the party. You have the ability to come to the party, but is it possible for you to come to the party? Okay, uh, Ali is asking a question. He might speak or he might speak. Good question. So when you use modal verbs, uh, you don't need to use the S. You can just say he might speak, they might speak, we might speak. So there's no S because of that modal verb. Okay. So, But if you delete the modal verb and you get rid of it, then yes, you have to go back to the normal way. He speaks, she speaks. Okay. Good question. Next one. Now, can't is kind of the opposite. What does it mean in this, in this situation? What does can't mean? I can't go to the party. Uh, I can't uh, I can't go skydiving because it's too difficult. What would can't mean? Opposite of can't, impossibility, good. Exactly, so you got it, impossibility and inability, kind of the opposites, right? I can't play the piano, I don't have the ability, I can't go skydiving, uh, it's not a possibility for me, I'm too scared. Okay, very nice. All right, now we're gonna get into a little bit more. Tell me about this. So if you got, you guys are pretty good at that part. Let's see if you got this one. Why do we use could? Look at the sentence below. I can go to the beach on Friday. I could move to another country on Friday. Now, the second sentence might sound weird. So give me a little explanation. Explain it to me like a teacher might explain it. What's the difference between those two sentences? I can go to the beach on Friday. Yeah, sure you can. I could move to another country on Friday. Hmm. Little less, a little kind of a little bit of a weird sentence. All right, Paulo says possibility and probability. Uh, yes, I think you're on the right track. Possibility and ability. Yes, I think you're on the right track. Uh, okay. Less. Po thank you, Judah. That's the one I wanted. A uh, little bit of less possibility. So this is the way I usually describe these things. Okay. So when we use could. Um, we use could to say that something is less possible. Okay, so yeah, you can you can go to a movie on Friday. That's that's possible, right? It's it's no problem. So this is possible, and that one's less possible. So whenever you're not sure about your answer or it sounds a little bit, little bit difficult to do, you might want to say could. Like for example, okay, this Friday, what do you want to do? Oh, we can check out a movie. We can hit the beach. We can hit the books, or we could uh, take a trip you know, on, th on the boat to the other island. So the last option sounds less possible. So we often use could when something is less possible, OK? So could, and you can also make this fake. You can say, oh, we could do that, all right? So that's usually the way we do it. 
All right, so, so far so good, guys. Very nice. Let's do another one here. Tell me this one. Tricky. This one's a little trickier. I can sleep in every day. And one of these, and actually, let me include this question because this one's important. One of these is more popular for using. Okay, so I can sleep in, uh, it, it sounds like present, doesn't it? I can sleep in every day after I retire. When are you going to retire? So it's actually not the present, it's actually a future idea. And number two is definitely a future idea because we use be able to. I will be able to sleep in every day after I retire. So both ideas are in the future. Uh, so the, what, which one is more common in this situation? I can sleep in every day after I retire, or I will be able to sleep in every day after I retire. Which one do you think is the more popular option? Able is a little bit, it's a little bit different, that one. Yeah, they're future, they're all future. Yeah, you can become capable to sleep. If you are able to sleep in every day after you become capable to sleep. Mm, I, I don't know if it's that, I don't know, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I don't know if it's that tricky I think we just don't say the first one I can sleep in every day after retire yeah you can it just it's it just sounds more if you have an option sometimes we use will be able to because actually if you use able to it's ability right and I can it's, it's can be ability as well so I think we often prefer I will be able to sleep in and the other thing is able to sounds a little bit more formal when you use it as well so it, it Maybe one is a little bit more casual for speaking, but I would say that the second one is generally a little bit more popular. Okay, so able to, use able to for the future, okay? But there's a little difference when you get into able to and you're using in the past. Like uh, when I was young, I could, I, could, uh, play, you know, I could play soccer really well, and I was able to do something yesterday. There's a bit of a difference there between how many times you did it and maybe doing it one time. Um, let's go here, let's jump into this one. Tell me the difference between these three sentences. And if you read carefully, you, you, should, you should be able to tell me if, if there are some differences or what are the differences. If we use should, ought to, and had better. Any differences between those? And obviously, you see the third one's got a few different things to it, a little bit more information. So let's maybe let's start with the first two. Is there a difference between those two sentences? I should be nicer with everyone. Yeah, everybody should be nicer. Everybody can be nicer with everyone. Or I ought to be nicer with everyone. Are, are those two different? Is, I guess we'll start with that question. What is, is there a difference between those two sentences? Should and ought to for advice. Marcella, yes, you are correct. So basically, there is no difference between these two. Uh, we do use should. We use ought to sometimes, not at least in Canada. We don't use it. We don't use it as much as we ought to. There you go. Uh, but uh, I made a teacher joke. But we do use it sometimes. Um, so you can use it. And the pronunciation of that is oughta. OK? So these ones are not obligations, Lolly. These ones are, you can think of these as advice, like it's a good idea. It's not a really strong one like an obligation might be, but it's like it's a good idea. Like you should study hard. You should be nice with everyone, and everyone will be nice to you. Now, look at this one here. So if number one and number two are better okay so Alex says number three had better is strong advice yeah I think we I think you're right Alex I think we usually use uh, had better when we want to give strong advice but look at look at what else we have in that information I had better be nicer with everyone or I will have no friends perfect reason to be nice with everybody or you have no friends and you'll be lonely so what do you notice obviously there's a little bit more there what's the difference between or not necessarily a difference but what do we need to have uh, in the third sentence if we want to use had better and the answer is just this okay and you don't have to use or you can use something else but you always have to have some negative situation so I had better be nicer with everyone or I will have no no friends I had better study hard for my test or I might fail so we always have some problem when we use had better Okay, we, I guess you don't have to use it, but most of the time in English when we use had better, we always have some consequence. Yeah, exactly, you got a dia. So I had better plus a consequence. Um, I had better be nice with everyone if I want to, I don't know, have a lot of friends. So I can use if, I can use or, but you need to have that consequence, that problem that could have there. All right, we are almost through this. We've got a few more to go. Let's take a look at this one. 
Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to say your name. I'm gonna call you Chief, Chief Shifra, or I'm not sure how to say your name. But uh, if you've never heard it before, it is it is quite common in English. We do use this one a lot, uh, so you had better start using it. There you go, uh, or your English won't improve. Chief Shifra, yeah. Uh, okay, so what is the difference in the word quiet in these two sentences? A little bit of a grammar challenge for you guys, and you can think about. You had th better think about. You had better think about um, uh, adjectives, nouns, and verbs in this situation. So, what are the some of the difference? Yes, Paolo, that's true. That's true. You would be alone for the rest of your life. Anybody want to take a guess? Yeah, give it a shot. I mean, you should be quiet, or you should quiet down. And what? And if you go back to the beginning, what do we always use after a modal verb? My modal verb is uh, should. So, what should we use after should? Mm, nobody yet. So, what if we go back up here? I'm sure someone will get it. Look up here. Where is it? Here. Subject plus a modal verb plus an infinitive verb. Okay, so that's your key word, infinitive verb. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so let's go here. You should be quiet. So here's my verb, and here's my verb. And what do we usually use after the be verb? Okay, we usually have a few options. Uh, after the be verb, you can usually use an adjective, a noun, or some kind of prepositional phrase. You should be in school. You should be quiet. What is quiet in this situation? Quiet is an adjective. I'll just write that there. And quiet in the second sentence is a phrasal verb. Quiet down, it just means be quiet, right? Uh, quiet is a verb. OK, so the rules are the same. We still follow the rules. You should be quiet. You should quiet down. Uh, all right, and now for the last, this one's can be a little tricky times. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at this one here. Uh, so by the end of this, guys, you should be pretty good. You should have a pretty good grasp about how do we do it. Uh, let's take a look at this one. There are two types of must. Look at these two sentences, and why do we use these two types? So this is a pretty big review. We're kind of looking at all the modal verbs today. Uh, similar to the, the can, right? The can had the possibility and the ability. What about must here? What's the difference here? You must study more and you must be tired. And I heard some people saying it earlier in the chat. So what's one of the reasons that we use must? And I know you guys have done this before. So let's start with the normal. This is, I think this is the one that you, most of you guys know. Yeah, Judith, you got it 100%. What is the one word that we would use? Thank you, Marcella. Obligation. Advice, suggestion, yeah, you're right, Paolo, but I think for an advice, you'd probably you should, right, or had better or ought to, because we usually use those things for, yeah, it's a good idea, but if we use must, we're like, you know, you got a little bit of a stronger uh, reason behind it. Obligation, totally correct, Bismo, you got it. Okay, so that's the first reason, we have an obligation. Now, what's the second one? You must be tired. That's not an obligation. I, I cannot tell you to be tired, that would be weird, and it wouldn't work. But what's the second one? What is a you must be tired? What is the one word we might use to uh, explain that? Advice, no, logical conclusion. Yeah, I think you, you got it, Marcel, a logical conclusion, deduction. I think, I think those are the very similar words. I use the word assumption. Uh, thank you, or guess, that's a, good, that's a good teacher way to explain it. Assumption or guess. Yeah, or if you want, I'll add it as well, because you're, you're right as well, logical deduction. All of those, I think, can help you to explain that one. You must be tired. You must be hungry. Why? Why are you hungry? Because you, you ran a marathon. Or you must be tired because you ran a marathon. You stayed up all night on New Year's Eve. You must be tired, OK? So totally right. We use that to make a guess about somebody. So that's, there's two reasons you use must. You must study hard, and you must be tired because I'm guessing that you're tired because you did something. All right, now last one. And I think this will be the most useful for these ones. What is the difference between have to and must? And I'm, I'm sure you've seen them both before. So both of these must are talking about which one? Are we talking about, OK, let me, let me add this one. What is the difference between have to and must for obligation? That's the one I really want to talk about. So let's add that. OK, so have to and must. What do you guys think is the difference between those two? Must is more strong than have to. Hmm, maybe. Have to is stronger than must. Hmm, must is strong. OK, tricky. Tricky, tricky. Uh, anyone else? 
Okay, so I mean there are different ways to one of the things you might want to think about, and I, uh, let me add this as a question. Yes, you're right. Okay, so let's go through it. I, I see you guys are giving me some extra stuff. Now, I'm going to give you my way of ex explaining have to and must, but you are, I think you guys have the right idea as well. External obligation and personal obligation. I think they're they're very similar, right? Uh, I don't know if I don't know if one is necessarily stronger than the other. They're both important, but one is more popular. And I want you guys to also think about which one is more popular in English, because we don't we don't use one of them all the time. Oops, what happened there? Okay, so. Uh, so in English, I think we external, yes. Yeah. So what I think what we like to do in English is we have an external obligation. So for example, you have to go to university. You have to get a job. You have to get a haircut. And in English, we like to we like to think about what is the outside, the external reason why you have to do something. So for example, you have to study. You have to do your homework. Why? Because the teacher might be angry. Uh, number two, because you want to get a good score in your class. Number three, because you want to improve your English. Number four, because your parents will kick your butt. Okay, so I would say in English we like to do that a lot. We like to create these external ideas why you have to do something. And number two, maybe must might be um, a personal obligation. Like sometimes when they when they explain this, they say, "Oh, you must, for example, you must come back to my house for dinner again." Right? Maybe you came over for dinner and I invite you back. And the only reason, there's not an outside reason why you need to come back to my house for dinner, but it's only my personal thought about that situation. And we, use, we might use must in that situation. And the other one, uh, one, of the, one of you guys in the chat said this, uh, written rules. And I'll put written formal rules. We also use, uh, we also use must when you're getting some written rules like so at our school we have a list of rules you must speak English only when you're in the school that's a pretty common one over here and we usually use must when we're when we're doing these written things so it is a little more formal in this way um, so I, I'd say those are the two biggest ones and the most important thing I think you, that you guys really need to know is that have to is more popular than must we don't really use in North American English we don't really use uh, must too much. We use have to a lot. We always prefer to use this one. So, I would I would say it's a little bit more popular uh, using have to. So, uh, and and again, when you're speaking quickly, we say have to. Okay. So I have to do this. I have to do that. We don't often say I must do that, um, unless we were again maybe doing some formal rules or something like that. All right. Uh, we are almost there. We're gone through quite a bit. There's, there's, you know, I'm. This is not everything. There's a lip. There's a lot more. I bus. I must buy something for dinner. Yeah, Marcella, that would work. If you were talking, and there was no other reason why you have to buy anything, and it's just for yourself, then uh, you can use. You can use must. And someone's just saying, oh, should I? Or, or you're saying, should I use have to? You can use both, honestly. And I, like I said, which one is more popular? I would say have to. Uh, but in that situation, you are right. Uh, there are some situations when if you use must, it might sound a little bit weird, but not in that situation because it's really just about you and your own personal feeling, okay? So you got it. Uh, but uh, have to is also totally fine. All right, next one. Don't have to pay money, uh, and you mustn't pay money. Now, those ones you can see there's definitely, uh, well, in English, there's definitely a difference here, right? So you don't have to pay money or you mustn't pay money. What's the difference in these two things? So let's start with that one. There will be consequences if you don't pay, Bismuth says. Um, could be. Yeah, there definitely could be. Um, but if I say, uh, what, what would be the explanation? How would you explain that to someone who's learning English? Advice and forbidden. OK, dear. All right. Uh, forbidden, I can agree. Number two. So. Uh, I'm going to, the way I might explain it, but you're right, forbidden is correct as well. It's important. So, okay, let me use the same words that I used before. Obligation not to do something. Okay? So just the opposite. Okay? It's not necessary. For number one, yes, correct. All right, so obligation. So we had a personal obligation in the first one. You mustn't pay money. 
uh, means it's important don't pay money. Okay, so it's just the opposite of the other one. So that's the easy one. This one is a little bit different. If I say uh, you don't have to pay money, like hey, don't worry, you don't have to pay money. What am I? What am I trying to say to you? If I say don't have to, you don't need to pay money. No, it's not necessary. Good. Thank you. That's a good explanation. It's not necessary. And a little more, just to help you understand that more, you can decide. You can choose. Okay. So, for example, um, you know, let's say you go somewhere, some places, museums. We have a museum in Vancouver, and you have to give a donation. You have to give a little bit of money every time you use it. Uh, so, for example, you don't have to go on Friday and pay the full amount. You can go on Tuesday and you give a small donation. So, um, so don't have to means it's your choice. Um, you don't have to pay money for. Um, what can I say? I'm trying to think of an example. Yeah, you don't have to pay money. It's just your choice. You can, but it's not necessary. Okay, so that's a little bit of a difference there. And finally, I think we're we're doing the last one. Uh, what is the difference between may and might? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Easy. Okay, may and might. Uh, you're pretty good either way. Um, I might go out on Friday. I might not. I may go out. I would say, hmm, which one? No difference? No, there's no difference. Might in the past. Uh, there might be a bit of a difference when we use might in the past. I might have gone out or something like that. Uh, some business say might has a lesser possibility than may. No, I, I, don't, I don't think they are, there's a huge difference there. I might go out on Friday. I may go out on Friday. I think they're basically the same. Uh, not too sure. May can be the name of the month. All right, you get a teacher joke point. Uh, but I think other than that, there's not some... Um, there's not a big difference there. And again, uh, Madiha, all of these can be used for the present or the future, right? We went through the, the warm up there, and a lot of them you can add information. If you say tomorrow, that modal verb is now has a future meaning. But if you don't say tomorrow, sometimes it has a present meaning. Or if you say every day, it has a present meaning. So modal verbs can be present or future. So that's an important rule about using those. So before we get to those wonderful pictures there, uh, I'll just give a quick example here. Quick review, uh, modal verbs prob probability the candidate should win the election. So again, a wanted expection. Um, okay, so I think we've gone through all this. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. Tell you what, let's jump ahead to these wonderful pictures that I've prepared for you. But before we do that, maybe let's do a little pronunciation. I don't know if I've ever done pronunciation with you guys. It could be good. Uh, and I think there's only a few which I would really focus on. For example, this one, number six. So if you guys use this word, you can say oughta. So I ought to go to the Rocky Mountains before I return home to my country, or I ought to go to this country before I die. So the pronunciation when we're speaking quickly is oughta. Because in uh, Canadian English, we, uh, we don't really use the T in the middle. We kind of get rid of the T and we use the D instead. So an oughta, we don't really use it. Um, we say oughta, or little, or water. You can, hear, you can see that we don't really have uh, we don't really have that in the, um, uh, we don't really use the T in that pronunciation. Next one here, all right, next one here, little quick one, mustn't. And when you use this, uh, you use mustn't speak. And you can hear in this situation, we kind of delete that T sound. Students mustn't speak their own language in the school, okay? Um, so when you're using some, and if I use another one, for example, can't, you can't, uh, speak your language in the school. Well, you could, but can't. You can hear I kind of dropped that T and I don't really use it. So when you have those contractions and you have the T at the end, even a word like what or about, we kind of delete those sounds. So we just cut it off. So uh, important thing there. And last one, I think the one that you might need to work on just to be clear, uh, don't have to. Okay, so again, um, you can use have to when you're pronouncing this word. I have to go to school or I don't have to go to school. Okay, so the V sound, we, we really speed it up. We speak quickly and we use half when we're using that. So just a quick note on pronunciation there. So what I'm gonna get you to do, I'm gonna get you to look at these wonderful pictures. Yeah, that's awesome there. Look at that hair, that's beautiful 80s hair. Not sure about this fashion. Hopefully nobody's offended by nipples. Uh, and there are a few pictures here, and I want you guys to make your own sentences. All right, so did I make any here? So, <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, this, this is great here. Not a good idea, not a good idea. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to use your own free reign. 
And I want you to use all the grammar that you've learned today, and I want you to make some sentences about what craziness is going on in any of these pictures. So for example, let's say if I take this one, number one here, that's some serious 80s hair. Um, that's a lot of hairspray involved in that, and this part of the hair, these are called bangs, okay? Uh, so what would I say about this one? This person must be must be trapped. I'm using I'm using a little bit difficult grammar here, but uh, you can use that as well. Must be trapped in an 80s time warp. All right. So that person is stuck in the 80s. So I want you guys to use your own modal verbs. Use anything that you learned today. Feel free. There's my modal verbs right there. And I want you guys uh, to use anything which is in the present or in the future. Like this person is going to have some some problems if they're walking on the street or something like that. So you can use present or future. So I'm going to give you, yes, I agree. I'm going to give you a few seconds uh, to, well, a few seconds. I'll give you a few, a minute or so. Make a few sentences and please throw them into the chat while you're doing that. I'll put on some music, but I'm going to chat with you while you're doing it, answer any questions you have. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to throw on some music, take a few minutes and look at those photos. Give me some sentences using might, using may, using must, had, better. Use something that maybe is a little bit new for you or you weren't sure about, maybe you've never seen ought to before, use that one. Okay, so I'm going to give you two, three minutes. Go in there, look at those wonderful pictures and give us a few sentences that we can share together. All right, I'll come back in a little bit. So here we go, a uh, few sentences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where are we at? Where am I not disappearing?
Okay, guys, so let's look at a few of these. I got a few of your answers already. Uh, most of these sentences look pretty good to me. Uh, we'll see if there's any, any little things that might need fixing up, but I think there are most of them are all right. Schiffler says, uh, the blonde woman should change her hairdresser. Absolutely agreed. Uh, that, that hairstyle ain't helping her. Uh, Dia says, this dude must dress another dress before going to work. Yeah, I agree. I'm uh, just going to add one more thing here, just an O here. This dude must dress. And again, maybe because dress. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could say dress. You could also say wear. I might just change this one to wear. Um, and because we are talking about, uh, I might change dress to clothes, uh, Dia, just because this is the way we might usually explain it. So wear, and, and because we have that clothes here with the ES, I'm going to change that to other. Uh, other clothes, you could also say different clothes. You don't have to say other. You could say wear different clothes before. And because, because of this before, we're going to use an ING here. Okay. You could also say before before he goes to work or before going to work, a uh, similar way. So if you use after, you can also use INGs as well. Uh, next person says she might be to party. <laughs> I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Is it this person who's come to party or is it this person who's come to party? It seems like they're both ready. Uh, she might be, but uh, maybe the sentence you're going to use was might be going to a party. I'm not sure. But uh, and then also you want to add that A there. So again, this is this one is a little bit. This is a future idea. Uh, well, sorry, uh, not necessarily. This could be a present continuous idea, or this could be, nah, it'd be a present continuous. She might be going to a party at the moment. Okay, so yeah, you you could use that as well. Uh, Madiha says that woman must not have time to do makeup at home, so she's trying to put on some in the car. Yeah, not a good idea, but that's exactly what she's doing. Not cool. Uh, Armando says, what happened here? Uh, must be brave enough to walk on the street with the outfit. I agree. Yeah, awesome sentence. Just one little one little thing there, Armando. And now you're rocking and rolling. Awesome. Uh, Choi Kai says she might try to make impression to her to her boyfriend. Good. Almost almost perfect there, uh, Choi Kai. Uh, she might try to make an impression. And some some things are tricky in English. We sometimes we use to, but sometimes we don't. And in this situation, I think we, we don't. We actually use on. And sometimes uh, it's difficult to explain why we use on, but just some words have this collocation where we have to use them with certain prepositions. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we're running out of time here. So I think, let's see what else we got. This will probably be the end. Uh, let's see. So Armando says, the blonde woman shouldn't go out like that. Totally agreed. Fix that hair. JB says, uh, let's see, may and might are interchangeable. Yes, JB, I think so. I think. There's not. There might be a situation in the past that I'm forgetting right now, but I think generally there's no difference between may and might. I might go out on Friday. I may go out on a Friday. They sound identical to me, and I don't think there's any difference in that situation. In the past, there might be one situation. I may have lost my. You know, I may have lost my keys. I might have lost my keys. I remember. There's probably one little rule that I'm missing. See, uh, don't remember everything, but um, most of the time, there's never going to be a difference between may and might. So don't worry about that. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, all the women are going out. Here we go. Miran has a nice one here. Let's add one more. This man might wake up late and wear his sister's clothes. I'm not sure which man you're talking about. Oh, this guy here. Of course, yeah, of course, uh, that the guy. Uh, so good, good sentence. The man might wake up late and wear his sister's clothes. That's a that's a possibility that it could be his sister's clothes. Uh, I'm just going to add that that possessive to the closed part, and that's a good uh, that's a good thing as well. Um, what is one of the difference? So maybe you guys can just answer this. If I say um, if I say uh, I might go out on Friday, or I can go out on Friday. Obviously, there's a difference there uh, between sounding one sounding like possibility. Well, they're both possibilities, aren't they? What would be the difference between? Uh, and it might not be the grammar, grammar difference or even the meaning difference. If I say I might go out on Friday, or I can go out on Friday, or I can stay home on Friday, what might be the differences between might and can in those situations? Because that's kind of a tricky one, um, and you know, um, you might it might not be a big deal, but just maybe so you can understand a little bit more. If I say I can I can go out on Friday, I can stay home at Friday on Friday, or I can uh, hang out with my friends on Friday. How many options do I have when I use can? 
usually more, right? Two or three or four, because that's why we use can. It's possible, it's possible, or something like that. But if we use might, how many things are we talking about? Just one. I might go out on Friday. It's just one idea, but usually when we use can, we're talking about lots of options, lots of possibilities, right? So one little difference that you might think about between might and can. Should I use this one? Because I got a lot of ideas that I could talk about, or am I just talking about one, which is maybe? So you can think of might and may as like a maybe will. Um, let's see what else we got here. Yes, JB, you're the winner. Are you correct? It is from the Drew Carey show. A little bit of a, I haven't seen that show in a long time, but correct that lady with the clown makeup is Mimi from the Drew Carey show. You are the winner today, JB. You've solved it, you figured it out. Um, so I think that's about all the time we're going to have for today, guys. So maybe I can give you this as just a, a little fun activity for you to do on your own. Uh, what I usually do with my guys in my class is I'll get them to make their own sentences, kind of like what we did with the photos, but now you can use totally your own ideas. Uh, for example, here, how to learn English. Oh, you might have to. You might have to go to another country and study. You may have to go to another country and study. You, you could go to another country and study. Uh, you should watch smart English classes and improve your grammar and all that other stuff and your vocab. Okay, so you could do that just as a fun activity. Maybe take a few sentences using have to, using must, and all that, and make a few sentences. Some great topics here, uh, how to learn English, how to be a good liar. Everybody needs to know how to do that from time to time. No, no, just joking. Uh, how to become rich and famous. Great, if you have advice, great, send it up there. How to meet your parent, your partner's parents. This could be a tricky one. You might want to give some advice or some obligations, some things you might need to do in that. Um, so that was kind of the modal verbs lesson for today. If you guys are interested, we could always do it uh, in the past with next week getting that practice in. And like I said, uh, always feel free to send me suggestions because I might change the topic just each week. If you guys have some ideas, uh, anything you might want to do, modal verbs. I know some people have been talking about prepositions. Could be a good idea. So this was kind of a little review uh, using uh, modal verbs. And of course, there's more stuff on the SMART website as well that you guys can always check out. Uh, if you're connected with that. Um, so if you guys have any questions, I'll hang out for a few minutes and hook up with you in the chat. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I hope it was useful for you. And like I said, take those sentences, do some practice, use it in your everyday English. And, um, and I, think, uh, I think you'll be good with that. So awesome. Uh, have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you a little bit in the chat if you hang out, uh, if you have any questions. But other than that, we'll see you next week um, at the same time for me. Uh, as for the other chatters, I think they're a regular time. Everything else is as usual. So uh, awesome. Have a great day, guys. Go back to bed or wake up or whatever, whatever time it is. And, uh, and keep watching us. See you next week.